This is how a Michelin star chef makes fish and chips. We're making it at home. Let's go. What's going on and welcome back to the channel. This series, we have been making Michelin starred recipes showing you how you can convert what some of these incredible chefs are doing into your home kitchen. You're not gonna find fish and chips on the menu of a Michelin starred restaurant, but Heston Blumenthal, who at one point had the best restaurant in the world, the Fat Duck, put out a recipe many, many years ago where he went into great detail on how to make an incredible fish and chip. He's got a couple of secrets that really take both the fish and the potato to from being just okay to being incredibly good. I can guarantee that if you follow the steps in this recipe, you're gonna be making fish and chips that's better than the pup. As usual, let's not talk too much about it. Let's jump into the recipe and show you how to make Heston Blumenthal's famous fish and chip at home. We're gonna start with our potatoes. The three cooking steps means that it's gonna take the longest. Good place to start. These are just regular potatoes, bags somewhere. It specifically said they were for french fries. Heston had a recommendation for specific types of potatoes, but I think these are good. They look a little bit like russets. You wanna starch your potato here, not a waxy. Peel these and cut them into the size that we want. We do want to keep them a little bit larger. We're going to boil them. They might fall apart if they're too small. I don't like the really, really big fries, so I'm going to sort of cut them about medium size. And stack them up until I have some French fries. They look a little large, but they are going to cook down a bit as we fry them. Put them in some cold water. It'll rinse off a bit of the starch and help them from changing color as I cut down the rest of the potatoes. Got a large pot of water. I'm gonna start this boiling. Add some salt. I'm gonna add my potatoes. Turn down my heat slightly because I want these to simmer, not boil over. So this is one of the challenging parts of this recipe is there's no real time for how long these need to cook. What we're looking for is just so they're starting to break apart. It's gonna depend a lot on what type of potato you have, how large you cut them. Just keep an eye on them after about 10 minutes or so. I think it's gonna take about 15, but it's a good idea to check them a little bit earlier because if you leave them too long, they're just gonna fall apart. So these have been going for about 10 minutes. I can still grab it with the tongs, which means it's not quite done, but we can see that it's starting to break apart a little bit. I think in about seven minutes or so, it's gonna be ready to go. Like they're starting to fall apart well. We can see if we put a knife in, you know, just a little bit of resistance. I probably have another minute or so left in these. I am gonna start preparing to take these out wire rack on top of a tray, set the fries right on top of here. Just broke one, that's how delicate these are. Just wanna spread them out on a single layer. But you can see that with this one, there are these pieces over here. Plus that's what we're looking for. That's gonna help us get a crispier fry. I'll explain that in a little bit more depth, but these right now need to go into the fridge to cool off completely. In case you're wondering, this took 17 minutes to get them to this level if you're trying to recreate this at home. The French fries are in the fridge. They are cooling down. While they're doing that, we have enough time to make a tartar sauce. Our tartar sauce, gonna start off with gherkins or pickles or whatever you can find, capers and shallot. I'm gonna cut all of these down. Oh, that's on there. Success. This one was already opened, that's why it was so easy. A few of these. So I've got my gherkins, my shallot, and my chopped capers. By weight, about equal parts of each. Now we're gonna add in some mayonnaise. To add some herbs, flat leaf parsley, adds a bit of freshness. And then I've got chives, a little bit of an onion flavor, really, really subtle, which I think is gonna go well with the shallots and the, the uh, saltiness of the gherkins and capers. I somehow forgot to buy lemons when I went out today. So I'm gonna use white wine vinegar, which works in a pinch. 
Let's set this aside in the fridge and prepare our batter. So the batter is really where the magic happens in this recipe. It's really what separates it from the ordinary recipes that you'll get. Now, I guess cooking the chips three times is actually gonna make a pretty big difference. It'll be a lot crispier, but the batter is where when Heston Blumenthal was coming up with this recipe, he discovered a little secret that you can use to get extra crispy batter. You don't have to use this ingredient. If you omit it, you will get a decent fish and chips. It won't be as crispy as what we're about to get for some scientific reasons. Let's show you how to make it. So I'm gonna start off with some just all-purpose flour. Then I'm gonna use some rice flour, then a little bit of baking powder. Set this aside. A little bit of honey. The honey obviously has a lot of sugar in it and it's gonna help get a really, really nice golden color. But the real secret to this recipe, vodka. We're not adding this for taste. Vodka is mostly tasteless. The reason that we add this, the alcohol in here is going to cook off a lot faster than water. We can then get a crispier coating on the outside. It's gonna start browning a lot quicker without overcooking the fish on the inside. Basically, longer browning time means a crispier coating and a more delicious coating. Vodka is the secret here. Almost all of the alcohol is gonna get cooked off. I've heard some people say all of it gets cooked off. I've heard other people say sort of a minor, minor amount stays. If you're worried at all, just use water, but it's not gonna get as crispy. It's not gonna be as good if you use this little secret. Back to our flour mixture. Add in the vodka and honey. And lastly, I'm gonna add a lager. Any lager will work here. If you don't want to use beer, soda water works here as well. The bubbles are important. The effervescence really helps make this batter lighter. With a little bit of salt. We don't want to make this in advance. You really have to use this most two hours within making it. So I have a piece of cod that still has the skin on it. I'm gonna leave the skin on. It's you know really up to you what you do with that. Cut this down into the size that we want. Some people would cut this into two and, and serve it like that, really, really big pieces. I like my fish and chips a little bit smaller. Here, I'm gonna cut probably, I'd say about six or so slices. I cut them on the bias or on an angle, so you really get nice longer pieces. Don't cut them too small because then the fish is gonna overcook and you're not gonna get the batter nice and golden brown. So a decent size. This is about the size that I like. Potatoes are completely cool. These jagged edges are going to trap oil as it cooks and it's gonna start making this part of the fry really, really crispy. Where you had a pretty smooth potato beforehand, now you've got something that's rough and jagged and so all of that is gonna to contribute to much crispier fry than if you would skip this step and just do the regular two-step frying of your potatoes. So let's set up our frying station and do the second step for our french fries, a low temperature cook and make them sort of light and fluffy. I'm using some of the leftover oil from my fried chicken video. So now we're gonna heat this up to about 265 Fahrenheit, 130 Celsius to do our first cook of the fries. Oh, it's just past 265, that's okay. It's gonna cool down a little bit once they go in, but I'm gonna turn this down. Now I'm gonna have to work in batches because my fryer isn't big enough. Far better to work in batches than crowd the oil. There should be very little movement at this point, just a little bit. This is only the first fry. We really don't want to see these getting any color, no brown or anything at this point. Should only take a few minutes. Okay, these look pretty good. They've got sort of a more dried out appearance. I've got a few batches to do, so this will take a few minutes. These are going to go back in the fridge, cool off completely again. I've got my pieces of fish, lightly seasoned them with salt and pepper, added a little bit of rice flour. You could use the regular all purpose if you wanted. It's gonna help the batter stick um, and dry these out a little bit. A Little bit more flour on here. Roll them around, shake off any excess. Into our batter and then into our oil. One of the little secrets that Heston had, drizzle this with a little bit more of the batter. After a minute or two, we'll just turn this over, rotating it so that the whole fish gets cooked evenly. 
And then once it's done, pull it out and put it onto some uh, paper to dry off. I'll do the rest of my fish. The last thing that we're gonna do is fry our french fries for the third time. Same temperature, in batches, fry the french fries. Golden brown is what we're looking for. We're just cooking the outside. This should take about three minutes. Once they're as browned as you like them, pull them out onto a plate lined with some paper towel. This is our fish and chips. Season our french fries with a bit of fleur de sel, a little bit on here. Let's make a plate. Some of our fries, piece of our fish. Look at drizzling that extra batter on top. What that gets you, this really, really nice piece. And there we go. This is fish and chips from a Michelin starred chef. Let's give it a try. I'm not sure if the microphone is picking up the crackling. It's crispy. Let's just use our hands. Tartar sauce. Obviously really, really crispy. The crispiest fish and chips that I've ever been able to make at home. Let's try one of the chips. Yeah, they're really crunchy on the outside, still fluffy on the inside. Those are fantastic. It's incredible how crispy they are on the outside and how they're still really, really soft and fluffy on the inside. Joy fish and chips, far better than anything you can get at a restaurant. It takes a little bit of time, there's a few steps, but I hope you get a chance to make today's recipe. Leave a comment, post on Instagram. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna see more videos. Aside from that, We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. It's so crunchy. Mm, I'm gonna make this a lot more. This is really, really good.